the Joe Rogan experience. What's really wild is like there's people that get away with not telling you the numbers. Oh, Netflix? Like Netflix gets away with, we were just discussing this last night because right. a friend of mine was saying like, what are you thinking about this actor strike? And I said, I don't, really don't know enough about it uh, to comment other than, look, if you're a person and you do something, like if, even if you're a comic and you do something on Netflix, like when I've done Netflix specials, mm -hmm. they just say, it's doing really well. And you go like, what does that mean? Like, how many people are watching it? It's we're really happy. Yeah. What does that mean? We're really happy. It's doing great. What, what are the numbers? <laughs> what do you think is the purpose of keeping it secret? Well, it's a genius move mm -hmm. because they don't have to tell you, so you you can't really negotiate. Ba like, if you do a special mm. and that special is ten million people watch it, it people go, oh shit, it gives we're them gonna all pay the Hassan more money next time because if he finds out that this many people are watching, you don't know until you go out in the road and then you sell more tickets and you're like, oh, mm -hmm. people enjoyed it. I guess it worked. Right. But when you don't have any data from the company, they could just not give you the data. Like on their side, it's great for negotiation. Like right. they, don't, they don't have to tell you shit. It's just they have all the leverage. There was an article about this yesterday. Okay. Uh, Sarandos defends not disclosing streaming numbers. Creators feel felt trapped by ratings box office. So how does he uh, defend it? I like Ted Sarandos, by, um, by the way. He's a very nice guy. Is, the longer paragraph is here, but it's... Uh, Part of our promise with creators at the time we started creating original programming, our creators felt like they were pretty trapped in this kind of overnight ratings world. And Oh, they're, they're trapped by oh, ratings. We're doing this for them. Yeah, we're doing it for them. We're doing them for them. They don't know. They <laughs> overnight ratings, a, uh, an analyst interview that went live, oh, oh, uh, a weekend box office world defining their success and failures. Sarando said during a pre recorded analyst interview, that's a little gaslighty. <laughs> and as we know, a show might have have enormous success down the road and it wasn't captured in that opening box office so part of this was the relationship with the talent not just the business aspect of it well, and I do think that over time people are much more interested in this uh, we're on a continuum of t today of how much data do we publish I think we've been leading the charge starting everyone down the path of a top 10 publishing our top 10 list and our annual wrap-up list and everything to give a lot of transparency to the viewing, and I just expect will be more and more transparent. Just Damn. say the numbers. This is right. a weird <laughs> yeah. little dance you're doing to avoid. <laughs> just tell people what the numbers are. Yeah, also, and, and YouTube it, was saying yesterday too that on on top of this that they might be changing the way videos work. For the, I think they said for the first 24 hours that all stats will be live, mm. like live view, viewer count, live thumbs up. I guess people really want to know that. Sounds okay. opposite of what he was just saying. Yeah, and it yeah, does that's seem what like, people want. They want to know what's successful and what's not. It does seem interesting that he says that, like, oh, we have, you know, a show might do better as time goes on, and the initial box office numbers might not reflect that. But it's like you're, but then you're also canceling all these shows the, the time yeah. they get the second and third season. Yeah, shut up. Right? <laughs> so it's like <laughs> it just, it just, there's no, it, it gives, it doesn't lend that credibility. No, we're what he's doing saying. it for the creator, right? Guys, we love you. Right. <laughs> Love you. We're doing it for you. Yeah. Yeah, this seems like a very abusive relationship. <laughs> that so like... I would imagine that has something to do with, I think, if you were an actor and you were a star of a Netflix movie and it was fucking huge, mm -hmm. you would want to know what the numbers are. Right. That's got to be part of their... I don't know. Is that part of the, what they're asking for? I, I know it's streaming I revenue. So. I think that was one of the things asked you. Yeah. This is one of the things. There's like the, yeah. the, the, the AI... Characters too. Yes. That, 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 that's a big part of this because SAG's still in strike, right? I believe so. Yes. So I think the AI thing was there was one contract that I don't know if it was actually being someone was actually trying to pe get people to sign it or if it was just being discussed where yeah. they would pay the extra, like an extra would be on the set, and, and then the they know they own their digital image. Mm -hmm. They could use it forever. So they could put you in the background of the fucking Hulk movie. They could put you in the background of it. <laughs> so you, could, you know, like conspiracy theorists believe they're crisis actors. They right. Show up at every mass shooting and start talking about something. And it's bullshit. Like this is the the most evil of conspiracy theories, right? Right. But these this crisis actor thing. Imagine if you just start seeing like AI people in every fucking movie, every disaster movie. You see that same guy. Yeah. Like that's that dude. Yeah. And that like dude the... probably got paid two hundred bucks. <laughs> You it's know? like the Wilhelm scream, but with like people's faces. Right. Yeah, right, that's what right. it'll be like. Oh, if it's a disaster scene, you know this this guy's in it. Well, maybe they'll be able to morph your image, give you a mustache, oh, fake probably... nose, 
Yeah, there's, I'm sure they can. You could tweak your face. <laughs> I mean, they could face swap you with different extras. They mm -hmm. could do all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. What they can do, did you see the Unreal 5 um, video game engine? Yeah, the car on the car, fire. Car on fire. See, Jamie, see if you could play that. Someone said, I, I forget the tweet, but it was something you know, along the lines of, you're not going to be able to ever know what's real again. No, and if it, it feels this way looking at the news with what's going on over, you know, over in Israel and Palestine, it's like, what am I seeing? How much of this is real? What's yeah? yeah how much like the propaganda on top of that? The like shitty reporting. Shitty reporting. It's like it is like it is so interesting that we have phones and we have the access to information constantly, yeah. and now we just know if none of that information is true. Well, we just know quickly what actually happened if you're online and and paying attention, mm -hmm. and the the mainstream news is so far behind that right Coleman Hughes was on yesterday he was saying that you know the original narrative was that Israel bombed a hospital in right in, in Gaza right what actually happened was another Islamic terrorist group launched a missile it failed and it landed in the parking lot of the hospital so this is fake mm -hmm. this is the unreal 5 engine you see a car on fire and then they have a little video thing pop the, through it. just the car is fake the rest of the video should be real so they inserted a car into a real scene. Is that what they did? I, yes. I, I, no one really knows, though, honestly, because Unreal Engine <laughs> looks so fucking good. There's right. been a re renewed video of the 5.3, and it looks. But I could, Jamie, I could imagine that's all the video engine. It Why could, would no, you think it, that, it could be? But like right there, that person walking in the background. Yeah, but you could do that. You you could. Well, but, that would be easy because this, they're not even in focus. Um, that would be so easy in comparison to this car that's in focus. It's just well, after, I'm just with. I've watched a lot of it. I just don't. I think that all they did was add that. Okay, just, just saying. Well, you might be right, but either way, look how good that car on fire. Yeah, looks. I mean, it looks. That's it looks fucking incredible. Very real. And look how the the flames vary. Mm -hmm. Like the flames vary like an actual flame would. It's yeah. not like sometimes you watch like digital flames. They do the same pattern right. over and over and over again. But this just looks just, like real fucking fire. There's a Smoke level of randomness. It's reacting to the thing in yeah. it. Yeah, it's nuts, man. Yeah, the the thing is making the smoke move. Motherfucker, dude, they're so good now. You're not gonna have any idea. No, you can't tell. You can't tell what's real at all anymore. And I think it was in 2015 they passed a law that allowed the CIA to use propaganda. On, on citizens for the greater good of the nation. <laughs> yeah, like, no, there's something like, like that. I'm, I mean, that's always been a thing, though. It's funny that they needed right. to pass a law. <laughs> well, now they can't get arrested for it, uh, or no one can get in trouble <laughs> well, for it. Yeah, I guess. I mean, but no one was really getting in trouble for it. No one was really getting yeah, in trouble. Yeah, it's right. like, it's I mean, like... you killed the president, allegedly. <laughs> right, it's it's more like them dotting their I's and crossing their T's. Yeah. Like, let's just make sure that what no one... What is that, that law, Jamie? I was just looking it up. I just stumbled across an article from the New York Times, 1977. Worldwide it? propaganda network built by the CIA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I can't imagine. 1977. I, don't, I mean, I didn't. I can't find the article really, but it's. It's so me. hard to know what's real and what's not real. There's, yeah, that's. I think that's like what we talked about with the shift in COVID. What mm -hmm. it really caused. It's like now I'm just suspicious of everything. Everything. Of everything. Everything I read, I'm like, wh what's that? Yeah. What what angle is it coming from? Who's funding exactly. this? Exactly, and it, not, it didn't used to be that so this way. This is what mm -hmm. comes up about what we were just talking about, though. Obama did not sign a law allowing propaganda in the U.S. Okay, so here's the claim. Former President Barack Obama signed a law in 2012 allowing the government to propaganda, al allowing government propaganda in the U.S. and making it perfectly legal for the media to purposely lie to the American people. AP's <laughs> assessment, false. <laughs> In 2013, Obama signed legislation that changed the U.S. Information and Education Exchange Act of 1948, also known as the Smith Month Act. The amendment made it possible for some materials created by the U.S. Agency for Global Media, the nation's foreign broadcasting agency, to be disseminated in the U.S. The facts, a post circulating on Facebook with a photo of Obama falsely states that he repealed a ban on government propaganda in the U.S. when he signed the National Defense Authorization Act in 2013. The amendment did not repeal the Smith Month Act, but rather lifted some restrictions on the domestic dissemination of government-funded media. Okay. Government-funded media, though, is you're getting close to propaganda. 
right? Okay, so here, the change essentially eased restrictions for Americans who wanted to access government-funded me. <laughs> but Mark we're doing Gaslight, it for you. Did Ted Sarandos write this? We're making <laughs> we're making it easier for you to access it. The change essentially eased <laughs> restrictions for Americans who wanted to access government-funded media content. Because you know, most Americans really want to access right. government-funded media content. <laughs> I can't think of anything better. Would uh, I rather watch Game of Thrones or government-funded <laughs> media content? I think I'd go <laughs> allow. <laughs> media produced by the U.S. agency for global media such as The Voice of America, Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty to be made available to Americans upon request. It was not possible before the law was changed. Even upon request, if I wanted to get through the get it through the Freedom of Information Act, for for instance, they couldn't do it. The amendment changed that, says Gabe Rotman, <laughs> director of the Reporters Committee Technology Committee's Technology and Press Freedom Project. Boy, when everybody puts, whenever someone puts freedom in their project, right. I'm like, uh, you, I, you don't, I don't trust anything of that. Yeah, yeah. Bullshit, yeah. son. <laughs> Is it patriot freedom? <laughs> You know, the Patriot Act. I just think it's so funny that, like, government-funded media was behind some sort of wall to begin with. Like, that's mm. that, that's kind of interesting. Well, it says it was the, there was essentially a de facto ban on the government dissemination of materials originating from the State Department. Yeah, because they, we didn't trust you. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't trust you to just fucking make these claims. Mm. Journalists are supposed to make these claims. Right. You're not supposed to release the news if you're the government. No, no. The journalists are supposed to go in there and find out what's actually going on. Right. And then and then, you know, I guess later we find out that they're really influencing these news companies anyway. Yeah. So it's like what it's so funny. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It sounds like a sneaky way to get propaganda to people. I, but I thought there was uh there was something else There's where all- they were it was proposing that they were allowed to use propaganda if it was for the greater good. I mm-hmm. thought that was a part of the whatever it was the National Defense Authorization Act, which the one that allowed for indefinite detention. There was one that had like some real sweeping over steps where people are like, yo, indefinite detention. Is like, that the same sort of stuff they used to get the guy who made the memes? This is in an article from question. 2013, but it explains everything we just read. It's okay. just, this reminds me of, I, I, this is re, for whatever reason, reminds me of, I went to watch Fast 7 in the theaters. Fast and the Furious Fast 7? and the Furious 7. Uh, it was only me in the theater. Well, it was me <laughs> It was me and this one lady, and at one point the lady goes, oh, walks out and leaves. <laughs> it's like, I don't, that's your fault. You came to Fast 7. <laughs> yeah. But it, in it, I think it's Fast 7, there is this hacker that creates... This thing that can see into every phone and see into every traffic light, it can get in, and the whole Fast Seven's, the whole Fast and Furious crew's job is to get this hacker and get her program and give it to the U.S. military because the U.S. <laughs> military are the good guys and they need to have this. Oh you don't want to end this up in the bad guys' hands. And it's like I just remember thinking, like, wow, this is blatant, like weird propaganda in Fast Seven. Yeah, I came to see cars jump out of, you know skyscrapers not this this is interesting well it's also they feel like those kind of movies sell to mm-hmm. the kind of people who like those kind of movies right like those kind of <laughs> concepts sell. like if you like fast and the fury 7 you know you might have a maga hat you know like you know you, you might have a confederate flag in your fucking den <laughs> 